You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Good evening. Welcome to Inside Out. Tonight the topic is clean energy in West Hartford, Connecticut, and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> I have two wonderful guests here uh, to explain it and, and tell you all about it. Catherine Divney uh, is uh, West Hartford's clean energy specialist and um, she is working for the town of West Hartford and also she is uh, on our uh, Clean Energy Commission uh, and has been for quite a few years. Right? Yeah, since I started here in 2011. Okay. Uh, Catherine has a combined, very impressive uh, double degree from Yale University. Um, she uh, has an MBA from Yale's uh, School of Management uh, and also an MBA from its uh, forestry school, which has been famous for decades. Yep, uh, environmental management. Environmental management, okay. So West Hartford is really privileged to have <laughs> you. And you also do some part-time coaching uh, for lacrosse and soccer, right, for your yes. kids here? Yes, yes. How many kids do you have? Uh, two kids in elementary school. Elementary, yes. wonderful. Yeah. So uh, that's why she looks so tan and healthy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, also we have Bernard Pelletier, who is um, the uh, commissioner of uh, clean energy on the West Hartford Clean Energy Commission. We're, we're all commissioners, uh, not that it's gone to our head. You're not, you're not the chair of the commission? No. Oh, all right. I was <laughs> so it's a lot of equality there. That's correct. Well, thank you very much for volunteering uh, on behalf of everyone in West Hartford uh, on such a commission. It really, oh, uh, thank you. West Hartford has such a marvelous tradition of volunteer effort and uh, community involvement and you are such a good example of it. Uh, Bernie, may I call you Bernie sometimes? Please do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bernie uh, used to be in his uh, more formal life uh, an, an actuary, which is a, a very scary profession uh, from my legal perspective, but uh, <laughs> um, you though are able to bring to bear uh, your actuarial skills a lot in, in this, uh, correct? A absolutely. Um, when, I, when I left, one of my projects was working on d disaster modeling and scenario modeling, and a lot of the work with, with energy modeling in the bigger scale is very analogous. It's just a, it's just a different setting. And so we, we can bring together the, the numbers and the metrics. It's, sometimes I feel like I'm back at, uh, back at Travelers. <laughs> well, at least you... You could be back at Travelers, unlike some other big companies around here, <laughs> yes, <indeed. laughs> which, is, which is a good thing. In uh, any event, um, w w tell us a bit about the commission, if you could, Bernie, because uh, you were mentioning to me earlier that it has a very diverse skill set, which is uh, great. Yeah, absolutely. So I, from a personal perspective, I, I think I joined in 2012 or 13. As, as sort of not even a formal member, uh, uh -huh. because it, it, under uh, Catherine's sort of guidance, it attracts really all sorts of people, anybody who, with an interest in, in energy, and I was one of those people. And it's it's a small but kind of a wonderful group. Uh, and on the on the commission now, I, I like to always say we have literally a rocket scientist. He uh -huh. worked for the Department of Energy way back when. We have a carbon credit uh, okay. person who works with carbon credits. We have Joel Campanella, who's an architect. In town, we have uh, somebody that works at Deep, who's the co, actually the co-chair with, with, with Catherine. Say what Deep is? Uh, Department of Energy and Environmental Protection of the state of Connecticut. State of Connecticut. Okay. Right. Yep. Um, and we but our our commission, you know, like Bernie's saying, we have a lot of technical expertise, people who work in the energy field. But the nice thing about it is, we are we do leave it open. Um, our meetings, we meet usually once a month okay. on a Monday evening in town hall, and we welcome anyone who wants to come in. I think at the end we'll, we'll put up when our next meeting date is. I think it's July 10th. Are uh, your um, 
meetings uh, posted on the website? Yes, on yes, the town yes. Website? We are a formal commission. So how and do so people find you on the website? What do they look for? Um, if you go to the town's website, okay. you can go right under the government section, and uh -huh. there is a, a, a topic heading called Clean Energy. Mm -hmm. um, we have a variety of websites up there, town information, as well as information on the commission. Wonderful. Yeah. But just, I mean, we are a formal town commission. Mm -hmm. we, our mission is kind of threefold. Um, so we work to advise and assist the town on reducing energy consumption. Mm -hmm. We also work to increase the use of renewable or clean energy. And our other, our third goal is to kind of capture any financial or environmental or educational benefits from doing those things. Those are great goals. So let's start with the first one. Yes. And uh, how are you uh, tackling your first goal? Well, um, so as a commission, um, our focus is really on the greater community. Okay. Um, since the town, I mentioned that I started working for the town in 2011, mm -hmm. and so since the town hired me, um, and my focus on, in my day job is really on town operations, um, the commission has kind of broadened its reach and is focused more on the community. We realized um, quite recently, um, with the help of some utility provided data, and I think we have a, a, a pie chart that will show that the town's energy use is really just a, a fraction of West Hartford's overall energy use. Well, you mean in terms of every business and, and residential home uh, yeah. in the community, sure. Yeah, so the, um, the town, um, like I said, I think we have a pie chart of electricity use for 2016, and the town itself in all of our buildings and recreational facilities uses about 20 million kilowatt hours of electricity and that is only five percent of what the entire town uses the residential sector uses ten times that mm -hmm. and so does the business sector uh, are residential and business kind of equal yes in, uh, yes uh, yes uh, yeah, they we each, have a huge residential yes yeah, we do. Uh, yes yeah. so that's why our our commission has really you know on a broad level we're concerned not only about the town energy use, but the community as a whole um, and the global impacts of that. So we've started to broaden our outreach mm -hmm. um, and our planning efforts to the entire community. So Bernie, you want to talk sure. a little bit about some of the events we've been doing? Ab absolutely. And what, what Catherine, is, uh, since the founding of the, previously the Workers' Comp Clean Energy, I'm sorry, the, the Clean Energy Task Force, which is the predecessor to the Clean Energy Commission, um, the concept is the municipality does a lot of work and they lead by example. And so this is, this is a follow on to that where the, the residents and the business see what the town is doing mm -hmm. and sort of fo follow suit as best they can. Does and the town have an educative uh, function as well in terms That's of it, precisely, precisely. Okay. If the town can do it, we the business can do it or we the residents can do it. So it's like we send Catherine first and okay. then once she succeeds, then we all sort of, we all sort of follow. But Catherine, you have to first get the town to do things, yes. right? And, yeah. and do you yep. do you work with the town council and board of education in that regard? Yep, my my position is in the plant and facilities department, so oh, okay. I I'm on the ground. We're we're doing projects. We're replacing lights with LEDs. We're replacing our our boilers. We're replacing old systems. We're installing new energy management systems. We do a lot of infrastructure and energy improvement work. Well, you um, just did a real broad stroke there. Let's yeah. get into that a little well, bit. But, <laughs> but our goal our goal was not to talk about the town operations. We we can do that another time. What okay. we wanted to focus on was, you know, some of the stuff we're do we've been doing lately for the community. We've been well. Holding I take it you're saying that you want the the residents and the businesses in the community to do those same things. That's right. Lead yes. lights, uh, you yes. know, new uh, boilers, etc. Correct. Exactly. So we've been doing um, some. You might have heard about some of our LED light bulb swaps we've held recently at the community centers where residents can come in and uh -huh. bring in five old light bulbs and uh -huh. they'll get five brand new LED ones for free. Oh, they will, because yeah. those LED bulbs are not cheap. No, but no. they're free. Wow. Through the town, we've used some grant money that's available um, to the commission through some of the utility-sponsored programs to purchase them. We always have a booth at Celebrate West Hartford promoting um, efficient lighting, promoting um, utility-sponsored programs like home energy, home 
there's a program called Home Energy Solutions, uh -huh. um, where someone will come, a, a qualified technician will come to your house, um, test your furnace, your other, you, um, your other equipment in your home and your other appliances for energy efficiency. They'll do caulking and sealing, and they'll what talk percent, to you about rebates. Yeah, what, what percent of West Hartford homes and businesses uh, are now natural gas? I don't know the answer to that. At it, it, it's, it's a high percentage, because uh, I can attest the oil use is relatively low, uh, low in this town compared to other towns. Yeah. Would, would you consider the use of natural gas as, as a less polluting usage than it, uh, oil? It is. It yeah. is a less polluting. And there, and, and there are less polluting things yet, uh, li, li, like solar and, and like wind, that we're also advocating for. But in the, in the hierarchy, yeah. Uh, you know, well, actually, I've noticed there are quite a few uh, homes now that have uh, solar on their roofs. I that's mean, right. in my neighborhood as well. One of the first outreaches that we had to, to residents was a solarized program in 2013. Okay. Um, when we started, there were about 50 homes in West Hartford that had solar on, on their roof, and we added about 70 in a 20 week campaign. Wow. To that. And today in How West many? Hartford, we probably have closer to 500 solar installations. We're ranked about a ninth, I think it is. Six, six or ninth, statewide? somewhere in there, yeah. statewide. Of, of 169 towns? Yes, that's remarkable. the number yeah. of solar installations. How does West Hartford achieve such a high ranking? Do you, I mean, well, just because people are interested here? I think, yeah, I yeah, think people are interested. Uh -huh. Some people do it for financial reasons. Some t people do it for the environmental um, reasons. Whatever their reason, people, yeah. people are installing solar. Um, and yeah. it really, is it a, a short-term savings or just a long-term savings for solar, would you say? Oh, it's, a, it's definitely a long-term investment. A, these, <laughs> these things, they, they typically talk about them lasting 25 or 30 years, but uh -huh. the truth is there are satellites in space that have had solar on since the 1960s and they're still, it's still, going. still, still operational. I mean, they d degrade a, a tiny amount each year, but it's a long-term sort of payback. Um, yeah, that's but, tremendous. But one of the things that we as a commission advocate is um, really looking at renewable energy options mm -hmm. should really be the last thing you do. As I mentioned before, we're, our, our primary focus is on energy efficiency and reducing energy use. So you can do that through conservation behavior, making sure you turn off your own lights mm -hmm. or you're installing a new, more energy efficient light bulb, like an LED light bulb. Um, could you explain a little bit about how LED light bulbs are becoming more user friendly and less like fluorescent light bulbs? Because, yeah. you know, a lot of people really like the warm, cozy feel of a, an incandescent light. Yeah. And uh, are LED bulbs getting closer to that? Absolutely. Yep. These days, um, you can get your warm and cozy LED light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have any oscillation like they, a fluorescent light? Nope. No. Nope. They okay. LED light bulbs now come in all manner of colors and shapes and sizes. Okay. Uh, Bernie and some other gentlemen from our Clean Energy Task Force actually um, participated in West Hartford Public Library's How To Festival, <laughs> their inaugural How To Festival. Um, and they had a booth on how to choose a light bulb. And they brought... <laughs> it's a big deal, really. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, In I, fact, the last time we went to the hardware store, I spent at least a half yeah. hour listening to a lecture on different yeah. choices. Yeah, and the, 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 number the guys one, were great, by the way, at they, the hardware they know. store. The number one question is, is how do you get the warm and cozy feeling? Because you yeah. don't want the operating room feeling. You yeah, or, or even the office field. And that's that's color temperature. That's 3,000 Kelvin or 2,800 yeah. Kelvin. It would I, sh I should have brought my light bulb prop. On yeah. the back, just as Bernie's saying, on the back of every light bulb package, there's a little sliding scale, uh -huh. which you can look at it and tells you what, as Bernie said, color temperature your light bulb is. Oh, and the lower the number, uh -huh. if you're down in the 2,700 or 3,000 range, uh -huh. that's a yellower bulb. And if you're up in the 4,000 or 5,000 range, that's a whiter, bluer bulb. Ah, so that's okay. what you have to flip it over and look at the back. And does the color temperature range indicate consumption or, or have nothing to do with no, consumption? It's, it's, re it's really the characteristic, how, how the light seems to you. Um, 
uh, like uh, the pure white or the daylight light uh, is very good. Like uh, one of the ladies came up to us at the library and said, I have, I have problems seeing. Mm -hmm. I, I want a, a bright light to read. And she, she actually chose a 5000, which is wow. very stark. Uh -huh. But that was uh, her. That overcame sort of her visual impairment, and she 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 could see with that. But most most people want the the warmer the warmer light. And the other th the other thing when Catherine talks about shapes and sizes, like if you have a chandelier, you, you can get some very pretty aesthetically, uh, you know, they, they look just perfect. They're they're warm. They actually have little filaments in them, but they're not really filaments. They're LEDs. Uh -huh. They're very attractive, and they use, uh, you know, a, a, an eighth of the power. And so most people don't realize if you have 10 40 watt chandelier bulbs, that that thing is using 400 kilowatts, and you you can reduce that, right. you know, to 40 or 50 kilowatts. That's that's a huge reduction. Yeah, it's really. Yeah. It, it, it will change your bill monthly, correct? Oh, for yes. sure. Yeah. For yes. sure. That's significant. Yes. So if you haven't replaced your light bulbs, that's. As you can see, one of the outreach efforts that the commission. Okay, so does. if you replace every single bulb in your whole house. Um, how many months will it take to, to pay for it in reduced bills? Well, uh, on, on average, y less than a year. Yeah. Less than a year. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, it, it obviously depends on how much, how many hours those light bulbs are on. But yeah, we, I mean, assuming you just keep using yeah. them the way you but would we've, always we've, use them. We've crunched the numbers uh -huh. on, you know, if you have a regular 60 watt incandescent light bulb okay. and you replace it with an equivalent 9 watt LED light bulb. Even if that light bulb operates just two hours a day, mm -hmm. every day, um, it will pay for itself in about four months. That's pretty good. And if you come to our light bulb swap They're and free. you get them for free, <laughs> yeah. then it pays for there itself. And again, <laughs> that's in, at, down, at Town Hall? Is the good. light bulb swaps, we did large light bulb swaps this past year. We had three of them. We are actually going to be at Town Hall um, on July 31st, all day, uh -huh. in town lobby while... Um, well, people have to come in and pay their tax bills, and we will oh. have a table. <laughs> You've got a captive audience. <laughs> we will have a table set up uh, okay. uh, with information. With with We're going to give one away one free LED light bulb okay. to everyone who wants one, and we will have information about some of these other energy-saving programs we've mentioned. Have you thought of working with the well-known hardware stores uh, on this effort as well to, to, to do anything? That's a, that's, a, that's a great idea. We have joined this year the Chamber of Commerce. Okay. And we're doing, you should. Um, doing outreach of that sort, but the, the idea of going to hardware stores to well, buy Well, that's where people will buy them. That's right. Going to appliance stores, yeah. because a lot of people don't realize that there's, for an efficient appliance, it costs more, but there's actually rebates that, that they're eligible for. So we want to make sure that the, the, our our residents know to ask for that, and the stores know to offer that. Well, exactly. So you really should check in with all the hardware yeah. stores. Yeah, great idea. Because, uh, and I find that the 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 uh, the, the uh, employees of those stores are really knowledgeable about this stuff. Yeah. So it's it's really they're really tremendous. Mm -hmm. um, hasn't the town put in lead lighting on a number of avenues? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's like on on the boulevard. Yep. And, uh, we are we have done. Um, a lot of the main roads in towns with LED street lights, and we will be doing the remainder of the town this summer. And, and doesn't that help to reduce um, light pollution so that we can see stars better? Yes. LED, I, I've noticed that walking at, at night. You are correct. LED lighting is much more directional. Yeah. Um, so the light can be directed where you want it instead of spilling out into and, the environment and into the night sky. So you're trying to do that. Yes. So, in yes. other words, it not only will uh, not spill out into the night sky, but it may also not spill out into people's windows, yeah. correct? Yes. Which yes. May inc improves yes. the quality of people's yes. lives. Yes. Ka Catherine's line is that it's street lighting, it's not lawn lighting, you right. know, and so we try to get it where it belongs. I mean, and I can... Do, and I, this is not my project, you know, we obviously, LED street lighting is public works and the engineering department and all the, it's a collaborative effort. Um, and we, it'll be every are, street in town. It will be every street in town, all the side streets And it won't well. be orange. It no. won't be orange. <laughs> no. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I consider myself incredibly privileged. I live on one of the few streets in West Hartford that has no street lights. And oh. some people don't consider that a privilege, but I do in, in terms of it's, it's just wonderful not to have any street lights at all. But yeah. I, I presume you wouldn't consider that. Uh. Street light <laughs> removal. Um, 
selective street light removal um, we've, we've been looking at you have. in terms of a consistency. Okay. Um, side, West Hartford has a lot of sidewalks and walkable areas. Yeah. Um, but I have noticed in, in my wanderings that, uh, and my driving around the state that West Hartford does have a lot of street lights compared to some other communities even. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little excessive in my opinion, but uh, you can ponder that. I'll take that back to <laughs> engineering and public works. Hey, I'm all for it. Yeah. I'm the energy specialist, right. remember? Yeah. No energy is better than any energy in my book. Uh, and um, so also you have a collaboration with Simsbury, right? Yeah, we're, the Clean Energy Commission has adopted as a project uh, called 100% CT, and it, it's sort of a forward-looking project. Okay. That is long-term vision. Long-term vision. We, we set our sights to, on 2050, and we say, what would it take to take our town 100% uh, renewable? So it's, it's aspirational. Um, right. And uh, how it got started is Catherine introduced uh, this actuary, yeah. To, to an actuary, uh, a fellow named Mark Scully in Simsbury, uh -huh. very like-minded, and he said, "Well, being actuaries, let's let's do the math and let's see what it would take to get our town here." So, to sort of take all these efforts, and if you if you want to think about LED light bulbs as sort of the tip of the conservation uh, iceberg, right. you've, you've got things like electric vehicles, you've got things like heat pumps, you've got right. Um, you know, building uh, energy retrofits, all these things can dramatically, by an order of magnitude, re reduce our consumption. Uh, and your commission is considers all of this, right? Yes. Um, and if people are interested in any one of these items, they can consult you or Catherine and mm -hmm. get additional information, correct? They can get additional information. They, if they're interested in helping out, Absolutely. They can also they, they can, can also join the commission. Yes. Join <laughs> come to yeah. meetings. Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's a tremendous effort. I mean, I've, I'm so much in favor of voluntary compliance when it comes to uh, laws and municipal efforts, and uh, this educative approach that you're doing is is really mm -hmm. great. Yeah, you, you want to get knowledge out there and enthusiasm. Yeah, especially uh, when there are financial benefits potentially on your bill and environmental benefits. Well, speaking of a couple of uh, consumer uh, compliance issues, I just want to mention a, a couple that, and, and you two may uh, say that, that they're not in your bailiwick, but one, you know, I, I just read in the Wall Street Journal that there's so much concern about the CO2 emissions in terms of global warming, yeah. but there's a flip side to it, and that is that the gross pollutants uh, that annoy us uh, so much in, in terms of our immediate health are, are not the CO2 issues, they're, they're the sulfur or, or whatever yeah. issues. And uh, many people complain about backyard uh, uh, fire pit burning. Uh, and it, it's, it's become increasingly popular. Here in West Hartford. Uh, in West, yeah. yeah, and around, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, but here in West Hartford. Um, and I believe uh, the fire department says that you're supposed to burn well-seasoned hardwood, you know, like shag bark hickory or, or something like right. that. And it, um, from, from what my nose tells me, that doesn't seem to be the case uh, frequently. Um, so that's not in your bailiwick, though. That's sort of a, a, a fire department it's, issue or... It's not in our bailiwick per se, but I, I can tell you, if you're burning like smoky wood, I yeah. mean, that's, there's a lot of bad stuff in there. It's yeah. not quite in the realm of tobacco smoke, but there's volatile organics, there are... Um, if, uh, very carcinogenic. Very carcinogenic, and if it's if you're sort of bathing yourself in like pine smoke and stuff like that, <laughs> and, and your kids, you're not doing anybody any any good with in, that, yeah. including your neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we haven't. You're you're right. The Clean Energy Commission, nor I in my job, have dealt with that issue. But you know, air quality is is part of energy issues. So if people uh, do have a quote issue with something like that, it's the fire department they call, not you. I d you know, I don't know exactly. I, I may, maybe I would call the main town switchboard and be directed either to fire or, or maybe. I know in some towns you need a building, you need a permit um, okay. to mm -hmm. even I have a backyard fire. I don't know whether that I is the case here in I think maybe our council, I don't think it is. The council might want to consider that. Mm -hmm. Another issue is the, uh, the advent of the yellow garbage bags. And um, 
That's that's another show. I think you said to me earlier that I should really do another show on that because it, it the 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 goal is to reduce consumption by having more recycling and have people yeah. not put yeah. the stuff that they normally would put in one barrel um, into and have them put it into another barrel and then the the other blue barrel is going to be weekly instead of biweekly so that they can yes. put more in the blue barrel. But yeah. this is another show and garbage, it's not your yeah. department, right? Gar <laughs> I did mention that. So garbage collection is under the domain of Public Works and okay. the director of Public Works, John Phillips, who I suggested you might have on, on your show. The whole um, pay-as-you-throw program, yes, it's, it's goal and it has been proven in other communities um, in Massachusetts and, and across the nation, does have the ability to reduce overall waste by about 40 percent. John has shared some of that information with me and even came and presented to the Clean Energy Commission okay. um, about the program. Um, but I, I don't have all the answers on that and yeah. I don't know what what the timeline or anything like that is. So I yeah, I think another show. Re Re another, go ahead. I Bernie. was just to say, Re only recycling minutes, is, so. is right next to energy conservation. Yes. In yeah, exactly. That, yeah. Like for example, an aluminum can, they basically, you can call it almost solid electricity. It takes so much to take so much electricity to take pure bauxite ore and turn it into aluminum that it's almost a crime to not recycle that. Uh, Are you suggesting people should drink bottled beer instead of uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, you should just recycle. You just should, recycle. You should, you should oh, lose, okay. use aluminum cans and recycle them. <laughs> um, no, but that's a very yeah. good suggestion because you really should think about these things. Uh, yeah, you should think from, from lust to dust, from cradle to grave, like yeah. I like to say. Absolutely. Well, it, it's it's a marvelous effort. It it, it truly is, uh, and it's bringing about change already. I mean, uh, yes. quite a bit. Yes. Uh, so we're, we're very blessed that we have so much ability to get uh, natural gas here, and that the cost of natural gas has become relatively low. Um, maybe uh, the commission could uh, lobby our um, electric companies uh, to reduce their uh, <laughs> bills because I think they're relatively outrageously high. Uh, yeah. or maybe you could get a, a, a special link up with Quebec and start hydro uh, power <laughs> going. Uh, into well, the other way to go, <laughs> I, I will say our utilities, uh, the cost is high for a variety of reasons, but the utilities are great partners. They, they fund mm -hmm. a lot, some of the grants that we've gotten. They, I would say we're among the best, our utilities, in terms of helping us reduce energy consumption, which is counterintuitive perhaps, yeah. but they, they actually do comp I, I know people in the Midwest where their utilities pay no attention to this, and, and I they, can, they just want more income. They want yeah. more income, and yeah. I can say, Catherine showed a figure on a, on a pie chart of uh, 400 gigawatt hours for for West Hartford consumption in 2016. In 2013, that number was closer to 500 million. So over it, it, taking in the aggregate the combined efforts of our 63,000 residents have reduced our electricity consumption by about 20 percent, which is a huge. That's uh, huge. Yeah. It's, it's huge. That's amazing. And so the cost is high per unit, uh -huh. but one of the ways out of that box is to use less units. Wow. Well, I want to thank both of you for explaining so much of this to us, and I know <laughs> there is so much more yeah. to talk about. So maybe after we have uh, Mr. Phillips on, uh, and, and we can have both of you come back and, and do some follow-up uh, uh, next year because it'd be really great to further this conversation and keep up the good work. Be sure to publish your agendas on, on the website for each meeting in we advance. Do, do you do are, that in advance? Are, great. Uh, so people there. know yes. what's going to be talked about and then they can march in and get you excited about yes. their issues. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> we welcome all the participation. I think, I think we have a, a slide of our next few events and meetings as well for peop so people can join if they're interested. Yeah, I'm sure it'll, it'll be on. So thank you for watching and uh, good luck. Keep up the good work. Okay.